let's... Alright, so now, let's have the moral conversation. So, let's, re let's begin from the beginning. So, this is a talk about something occurring on one, one of the viewer sides. I am not... Now, I'm going to make all my comments from what I've heard from them, understanding that there are things that are not being told. There are sides of the story that we cannot hear given the limitations of having this just be a stream. So, I'm... From, in addition, I'm going to try to take this from the side of moral Kantian deontology, I believe is what it's called. Basically, try to do it from the moral of absolutes. So let's talk about the situation itself. There is a friend of one of my viewers who is going, who's going through hard times and was hoping to get some additional food. So they're planning to send him some food. Now, every um, however many week, let's say it's once every week, there's a basket that's sent to their, their um, this viewer's own house where um, it has food, just rice, beans, sort of the things that you need to get. Sometimes it has special stuff. For example, in the previous one, it had this cake bread sort of stuff that's just delicious that um, this friend really loves. Anyways, during the coming to take the baskets, one of the people at the viewer's house took over 90% of the food in the baskets. Is all right, I'll go now, see you later. All right, see you later, Mindful Line. Totally, I think I'm done with runs. I think I wanna do this moral quandary discussion and then I'm gonna be closing it off. So, basically, the issue is that this member of their family took a, a higher majority of this basket than they should have. Even, and since they were planning to use this basket to give to their friend themselves, this just leads to a lot of the friend basically being out of luck. They feel obligation to their friend, and the whole discussion is they feel obligation to their friend because they're a friend, versus obligation to their family member because in their mind they're a big jerk. They did not they did not go into details about all the things. I did not ask for the details. I actively asked not to share them, if anything. So understand I do want, want to have some limitations because I want from absolute assuming they're a jerk. Um, again, this whole limitation that we cannot talk to the other person, we cannot get too much of their side. But we do know this about them. They are all living at home. Their mother is going through some hard times. I know that the viewer cares about their mother. But then the, the sister is the one who's taking the food. The sister has a child of her own. Um, but the thing is, this isn't like um, a bunch of kids working around. I think the youngest person involved in this entire situation is in their 30s. So... These are all adults that we're discussing. And basically the question is, to what obligation do you have for taking the baskets? Your, your sister, d wait, your sister does not even live there. Is the basket for your family or for the people that live there? Because that extends this conversation even further. But so, anyways, let's talk about the obligations of this basket. So we are under the assumption this basket is given to the family. Um, so your brother gets it from his work every month. It's like, wait, this basket is like your brother's salary. I, I just, I, we need to pause and confirm that this basket can be treated as your brother's salary because that makes it a lot easier. All right, so he gains a salary of a certain amount of money plus the basket. So it's a portion of his salary. Is the salary given to him because he is part of a big family? Or is it just given to him because it's part of his job? Because if it is simply a basket as part of his job, then there are no obligations. If it just works up, all right, that simplifies a lot. There is no obligation from your brother's side. Like this is, this basket now 100% belongs to his brother. So then there's the question of the, the baskets, all right. So now we know an additional theme. The basket doesn't belong to the family. It belongs 100% to the brother. This changes things drastically. <laughs> All right. Um, so the first question is, to what obligation do you have to family members? And then do what, to what obligation do family members have to you? So generally speaking, if you want to be as cool, if you want to be just like as absolute as possible, I think the only people that you have obligation to as family members are the children, the ones who cannot, who are not capable of making their own decisions. Anyone who is a dependent to you 
by their dependency is a declaration that you have an obligation to them. That is the only thing I think morally is an obligation. Obviously, there's value, there's virtue in being care caring to your parent, in being connected like that. There's a lot to say about a man who, on the day, gets abandoned, on the day they're independent, gets abandoned by their parents. There's a lot to say about the parent in that situation. But, um, yeah, and I recognize, Chris, I recognize to my viewer that it is not your children, it is not your child, and it is not your basket, which is where I'm getting at. That's you actually have no obligation to give anything to this person. Now, that is on the cruel on the cruels aspect. There is no obligation whatsoever, 100% yours, 100% to your brother's um, basket. And if your brother wishes to give the basket to a friend, then it is 100% his place to do so. All right. So that cha that changes things. The fact that it's not belonging to the family. So let's talk about the consequences of that. Oof. This is where the con consideration starts coming in. Because if it belongs to one person, very easy to just say it belongs to that person. Since there are no dependents involved in this situation except for the dependent of the dot otter, that's it. So actually, here's a good... Here's actually a good discussion. If you have a basket full of food... And there's a poor, per there's just a random person on the street who is poor and has a child. Do you have an obligation to share with the child? No. Like, definitely it's virtuous for you to do so. Like, I think a lot of people will not argue it is virtuous to share, but there's no obligation on your side to be altruistic. Actually, what? That is actually a big argument. Is there a moral obliga obligation of altruism? Hmm. By the way, I don't think we're doing any more runs today. I'm going to close off this little thing up here. Is there a moral obligation to alt altruism? Hmm. So in a world without altruism, a lot, of pros a lot of the prosperity that occurs now... Hmm. So, by the deontological argument, if no one was altruistic and everyone was selfish, the world would survive but would not thrive. And therefore, you cannot say it's a moral obligate. It's a is not a moral imperative to be altruistic, but it is a moral positive to be altruistic because people prosper without it, but people do not suffer in a world where no one is altruistic. So, it is a moral. So I think altruism is still a moral positive, but is not a moral obligation. With that, the simple fact that if you do not follow any moral positives, but still follow moral obligations. You are not. You may not be good, but you are not evil. If that is all you care about, just not being evil, just you can still be selfish and not have issues. It's where you start taking that which is not rightfully yours, where we start running into things. For example, the argument of theft. There's a moral obligation that if everyone stole from everyone, no one would have anything in the in an eventuality. Um, it. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the simplistic version to argue why it is a moral imperative not to steal. Um, in this case, it sounds like if the basket belongs to your brother, it is therefore theft from the daughter's, from your sister's side. Now, as, then we have to talk about the daughter of your sister. As I argue with the case of the dependent has a responsibility to you, it is your sister's responsibility to care for the child. But if you care for the child by breaking a moral imperative, if you break one moral imperative to try to manage... So I'm going to take this... So as I said, I'm trying to take this in absolutes. We're, so I'm going to take this from the situation that your sister cannot provide for herself without this basket. Obviously, this is a false statement, but we're going to... Or at least in your case, this is a false statement. But I want to take it from that moral position of if if your sister was poverty-stricken and reliant on that basket to take care of her daughter. Is it a In other words, let's say your, your sister and her daughter were the poor person on the streets. So, I do not believe... I need you to think, is it right to break a moral imperative in one aspect to try to maintain a moral imperative in another? The simple answer, is it a moral virtue to do something good at, by breaking the moral per imperative to another? And that is not. That it is not. To break one moral imperative to survive another? The general argument of, of deontology is what puts you in the situation 
where you were forced to break one moral imperative to manage the other. That there is a responsibility for you, that maybe this is your solution now, but there was wrongdoing earlier on that led you to be in this situation. That you have, by, all, by the deontological argument, there is no right to break one moral imperative in the sake of another. That the dependence of the child does not justify the theft. That is the general argument in moral imperative. So, by that, the act of theft is wrong. And I think this is a thing that I should note, that deontology just, a just asks about one act, independent of any of the actions around the act, just the act itself. It does not... While I'm saying about are you a good person, are you a bad person, this is because that's how most people look at it. Um, the moral imperative does not... The moral imperative does not care for good and evil people, just good and evil actions. And you give an example of a guy who robs the pace to help the children he has, like need to transpire kidney, or... I'm literally trying to take the example of would you steal bread to save your family? And by deontological argument, no, it is wrong to steal that bread. It does not matter if it's to save a life. The fact is you were not... The act of theft is immoral. It does not justify any action the consequence of that action is not justified. Um, I think th that's a good thing about the deontological arguments, because I'm going by deontology, there's utilitarianism, there's hedonism, there's a bunch of different moral arguments you can make. The deontological argument does not care about the consequence of the action. It cares about the action itself, and if you want to try and make exceptions, you can talk about the why, but the consequence thereof is not considered for the following reason. We cannot predict the future. Because we cannot predict the future, deontology does not care about the future consequences of the action, just because it's assumed. A perfect example, and like the example that's usually used to break deontology, to test whether you are a deontologist, is the obligation of not lying. This is actually something Socrates brought up, where um, a man said that lying is wrong, and then he was asked, what about the soldier who lies to the enemy to the enemies to make sure he can win the war with less casualties and stuff like that. Deontology takes it all the way to the boiling point, you don't talk about this, but lying is still wrong. Deontology believes Ron that lying is wrong in every single scenario. And it, and even it's been challenged to the example of let's say you were in um Let's say it's around World War II and you happen to be in a very specific area of the world with a certain guy in power. I'm trying not to say it because I'm sure Twitch won't appreciate me saying it, and since I'm also planning to bring this to YouTube. Um, but yeah, so let's say you're in that you're a person living there, and you have let's just call them your homies because we want to prevent the direct communication thanks to Twitch and YouTube. But let's just say you have your homies, and they're really worried about the government system here in this area, and so you let them hide in your basement because. Now, you could get in a lot of trouble if people know you're hiding your homies in your basement. So then the police come over, and they knock on your door, and they're like, Hey, are your homies in your basement? Now, if you reveal that your homies are in the basement, they're going to have bad stuff happen to them, and they're going to have bad stuff happen to you as well for hiding them. So if you just lie and say, No, they're not, they'll leave, your friends are safe, you're safe, all that's taken care of. The deontologist's argument is that because the line is absolute, you have to say, yes, I have friends in my basement. I'm hiding my homies in my basement. And that's a really hard thing to stand by. If you're a deontologist, you have to stand by that. And that's the hard thing to do. Because the argument is this. We only assume the police are following the big guy at the top who's doing these horrible things. As far as we know, we might say yes, and they're like, awesome, so you're a part of the resistance. Come on in. We need to, we gave you beads to get out of this. Like, as far as you know, they might be part of the resistance. As far as you know, they might you might say no, they might go to your basement and go come find your homies, and then you're all three of you in a worse situation. You don't know what the situation is. You cannot predict the consequences. Therefore, you have to go by moral absolutes. And the absolute of not lying is absolute. The absolute of not stealing is absolute. Therefore, this this basket that we have discussed in your story, in your life, it belongs 100% to your brother, to the person who earned the basket through salary. He is at zero obligation. There is no obligation for it to be given to others. That is theft. Now, he has, as he is the owner of the basket, he has every right 
And perhaps it's a more and is a moral altruism is a moral good, but not a moral obligation. Therefore, he can be altruistic with his basket if he wishes. It is not his responsibility to be so. He has no dependents that rely on him to be his moral responsibility. Therefore, your friend with his basket, your brother with his basket, can do with it whatever he wants. Perhaps he has the he wishes to be altruistic and give to his family. It is his decision where those things in his family in the basket go. It's his decision because it belongs 100% to him. It belongs to your brother 100% morally speaking. He has the 100% obligation. He has 100% everything is his. Altruism, but your brother seems like a good person and he will be altruistic and help out the family and help out your friend and help out you. But I think your sister taking that stuff is, by moral obligation, is considered theft. That was a moral wrong. Now, I will state, this does not state that she is a morally wrong, evil person. This simply states that it was a morally evil act. I'm not even sure deontologically I can argue that a person who consistently commits morally evil acts is an evil person. I don't think, yeah, I don't think um, deontology cares about morally good, morally evil people. You just... It just cares about the act. But, yeah, in this action, you are correct. Your sister was in the wrong. Um, so now, now what's the solution? Well, the solution, really, because it's your brother's basket, really the solution is to declare it's your brother's basket. To just make it clear that the giving of the basket is not his obligation, but, for, but his altruism to his family because he cares about his family. It, if your brother so I will say this if your brother just puts the basket on the in the middle of the family table it says this is for the family your sister is part of that family she has a moral obligation to her daughter therefore she can go since it's for her family even though it's cheap I don't think while well, splitting it's very rude it's a moral penalty not a, not breaking a moral obligation to take therefore the consequence is for your brother to not just say this is for the family. It is your brother's place to divvy it up as he sees fit. If he just simply releases it and says for the family, then there is no moral obligation for anyone outside inside that family to hold back. Therefore, if she, if it was just here's the basket it's for the family, she is morally all right taking the ninety percent because she is part of said family. It's rude. It sucks, but. Deontologically, that's not an issue, because he gave altruistically to the family with no greater definition, and she is part of said the family. The family could respond to her in many ways, and it sounds like you're the only one who has an you and your brother are the two with the issue. But remember, your brother is the owner of the basket. He is he is of the position to say, "All right, I am not giving this to the family. Let me look through. My altruism is more limited." All right, this item. This is to the family. She takes it. Alright, this item. This is specifically to my mom, because I wanted to give this to my mother. This item. This is going to my friend. These items. These are all mine. I'm not going to be altruistic beyond this. It is basically your brother's position. If your brother is... It kind of depends on how your brother is approaching the giving of the basket. If it's just absolute altruism to the family, there is no issue with what your sister did. If it is his basket and she intercepted and took before your brother even got access to it, then it's a moral wrong. Because that is it's the difference between theft and grace. It sounds like your brother is a good person, he cares about his family, so he's being altruistic with the basket. Therefore, as long as he's being altruistic with the basket, even though one could be selfish, it is up to the people in the family to interact with that person to prevent selfishness. Not is not a moral quandary on the deontological side it is just from there of discussion within the family. I I could go deeper on that, but I'm not sure it's necessary. I'm not sure you care, and I it would take me quite a bit. It would take me like another 20 minutes. Yeah. So your dad does not stop her because as I said, this is a moral issue to address within the family as like family tribalistic bonds. Deontology I don't think addresses tribalistic bonds. D tribalistic bonds follows under the utilitarian umbrella more than the deontological. In case you're wondering, utilitarian and deontological are almost polar opposites. They're not polar opposites, but one is very, you must have absolutes, and the other is, here's the general idea of the good, reach for it. It has more, it's more, 
I am being very vague on utilitarianism. Util if I had a utilitarianist, that I could argue it. But, yeah. Like, moral fiends versus moral acts. Yeah, exactly. This is... Like, it's not... It's not that it's... When I say immoral, I don't... So, when I say that her actions are immoral, I don't mean it's morally wrong. I mean it's absence... Absent of morals. If the... As long as the altruistic give to the family, her taking all, because she is part of the family, that is immoral. It is amongst the family to decide, as the tribalist of argumentation, what is moral and immoral among the family. Actually, hold up. I gotta consider that as a deontological position. Sorry, I'm just considering. Alright, I got an addition to that. If the family breaks general moral principles, if the overarching moral principles that you can create around the world, if your family breaks those moral principles amongst their moral contracts, then that is immoral of the family, despite the fact that it's an argument within the family. So if you declare that that basket is to be tri tri um, split upon equally, if that is an agreement made, then that is immoral. But it is that decision that is made. That decision has to be added. But if they say, oh no, she has the right to steal from you, then it is immoral because it is still the act of theft, despite being an, ar an, an argument within the family. <sighs> so anyways, let's just get to the final salute, the answer to your question. Because you're, because I, I think, um, so generally with a moral argument, as I said, you can't really say moral or immoral people. You are not telling me certain information. I have asked you not to tell me that information, so... There's certain things I can't make a argument on. It's just the simple thing of your brother has to talk to your family about what this basket is. Is it altruistically given to everyone, or is it his to divvy up? And if it is his to divvy up, he has every right to just take it all. He has every right to give as he sees fit. If it is his... So, if it is his right to divvy up, it is also, if he wishes to be altruistic, his obligation to divvy it properly. Um, if he is just giving it all... Yeah. So, really, since it is your brother's, it is up to your brother to come to, to the final, to the decision. If he says, I'm still altruistically giving to everyone, and you are alone in... Th so then we have the issue of, your brother still decides to give to everyone. Your sister still decides to take, and your family does not wish to make a rule of equal trade. Unfortunately, there is no moral broken. There's just the question of... Do you wish to be under the obligation, under the moral principles of the tribal, of the family? And that starts asking questions. You, a lot of these things, if you're having issues, it's best to address them. That's all I can say at that point. Um, but yeah, you are an adult yourself, so at a certain point, you can just... You can state as an independent that I do not like how this family is treating its moral arguments. Therefore, I am separating myself from said family. That is a solution you t you have. If you ever... I said they don't care about, so I'm going to do whatever I want. If they don't care about it, and if your brother is alright... Because, yeah, if if you say the uneven in trade is not listed... If you want to take the, 90, the 100% as she took the 90%... As long as they didn't make that moral obligation, you have every right to do so. Yep. If he's altruistically to the family and you get there first. Hey. <laughs> you don't want to take 100%. Good. Good on you. Good on you. And that's the theme. I am, so when I'm a deontologist, I'm a deontologist on the greater themes. I think everyone... Yeah. <laughs> you just want the cake. Fair enough. Yeah, I think everyone has an internal logic to morals. Everyone has some sort of internal logic to morals. You know what you know when you're doing wrong. And if you you here's a theme. This is just a theme about always make yourself strong. And one of the weakest things you could do is know is feel in yourself that this is wrong and to do it anyways. Cause if you break your own morals, then there's no then who would even respect your morals? So never do what makes you weak, and doing something that you know is wrong is something you know makes you weak. That's um, just a ge that's not even a deontological theme. That's just general life advice. So even if you don't have a moral system, doing what you feel is wrong will make you weak. All right, Oof. I think I covered quite a lot. 
Um, this life advice is hard. Oh my gosh, I spent so much time. So in case you're wondering, I've been looking into life advice things since I was a teenager. And I've needed quite a bit. And even then I'm getting it wrong. But the moral arguments, I love the moral arguments. I have... My brother's an awesome dude, so we have some of these discussions. And without him discussing, I would... I will say, I've gone to some extremist routes, and then my brother's like, well, hold up. What about this? Oh, I never considered that. What about this? I never considered that. And then after a while, I pull back into extremism. Out of extremism. And then I head another way, and then he pulls me back. And then my, I see my brother, you're going to extreme, and I pull him back. And as long as we have someone else, we have each other to kind of pull her back together, we are safe. Because I will say, this stuff is definitely very scary when doing alone. Uh. Yeah. If someone... Yeah, you gotta keep balance, basically. You have to keep balance. And, um, yeah, if someone does something that you know is wrong, but they don't know is wrong, the question is, can you can you elaborate to them why it's wrong? Because, you know, you are you have an obligation to yourself not to do what you know is wrong, but if they don't think it is wrong even when they do it, I don't know what to say about that. Like, technically they didn't do anything wrong. Ah. Uh. All right, I think we covered quite a bit. I think I went over it pretty thoroughly. You're gonna say, oh, you're gonna say one last thing? Go ahead, go ahead, I'm I'm still here. Don't worry about that. Ooh, actually, hold up, let's see. I'm gonna turn off the music though. Let's see if this picture is, ah, beautiful picture. Beautiful picture, I love this picture. All right, so I'll stay one more second to hear your last thing. Don't you worry. Ah. So glad I got this picture. <sighs> mm. Love it. Do which I use caps, but oh well. I'm assuming you're still typing it out. I'll be patient. Hmm. Yeah, most people don't have moral systems. They just do what feels right and wrong to them. It works often, but not all the time. Alright, so here's the thing. I bought a bread stuffed with pepperoni. She went went there and cut only part the part of the pepperoni and left only bread there. When I spoke in the with a family group, she was quiet and did not reply. And the reason she did not reply is because she knew in herself that what she did was wrong. That's my guess. She knew what she did was wrong, and she was weak. That's why you don't do what makes you feel wrong, because it makes you weak and unable to respond, as shown. So, do you know what type of person she is? Listen, if you're the type... And if I can leave you with one thing, and one thing only to all my viewers, never do what you know is wrong. No matter how good it seems, never do what you know is wrong. If you know in yourself what is wrong, never do it. Because that will make you weak. And being weak leads to a lot of other consequences, to put simply. you I talked a lot. Too much for learning. I already talked a lot. All right. Well, I think we went more than long enough in this discussion. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you all have wonderful days.